Thanks, Leah. Hello, my name is Dave Martin, and this presentation is Driving CAD with MathCAD, Engineering Calculations Made Easy and Accessible. The agenda for this presentation is as follows. First, we'll see a demonstration of how easy it is to make a change in CAD with an engineering notebook. We'll discuss how designers and engineers manage their calculations today, the problems designers and engineers encounter with units, connecting engineering notebooks to Creole parametric models, the benefits of driving CAD with PTC MathCAD, and finally, we'll see how easy it is to make a change in Creole parametric, recalculate the worksheet, and update our geometry. An engineering notebook is a PTC MathCAD worksheet built directly into our Creo parametric parts and assemblies. By connecting our CAD to PTC MathCAD, we're driving our CAD models and geometry from our engineering calculations. We're making decisions based on CAD. We're documenting and capturing our engineering calculations so they can be understood by others and reused. And we can implement engineering notebooks and changes easily. Let's jump right in and see how easy it is to make a change to your model with engineering notebooks. Here we are in our engineering notebook, which is the PTC MathCAD worksheet embedded in our Creo parametric power transmission assembly. You can see that it starts with documentation, including text and images. This way, I or anyone else can revisit this information months and years later. Let's look at the picture. Power is transmitted from the right-hand side of the lower shaft through the gears on the left-hand side. Here you can see our drive, the radius of the driving gear, and our driven, the radius of the driven gear. The power is then output on the right-hand side of the upper shaft. Next, we have our given parameters. And these given parameters include our input variables from Creo Parametric highlighted in red. We have the radius of the driving gear and the radius of the driven gear. We have the input speed and the power requirements. If we scroll down, we have our first outputs. We have the output speed that's calculated as well as the output torque. Then our worksheet calculates various different bearing loads. Again, all documented and computed using real math notation. Based on all these different calculations, we have our final output, which is the inner diameter of the hollow shaft. Let's look at how easy it is to implement a change. Let's scroll back up to our input variables. Let's update the inputs. Right now we have 40 hertz and 300 horsepower. When we update, the new requirements are for 36 revolutions per second and 250 horsepower. When we scroll down to the bottom, we can see the updated value for the shaft inner diameter. It went from a value of 27.6 to 28.4. Now we can send our change back to Creo Parametric. We save and push. We have a confirmation that it was completed successfully. Let's minimize our MathCAD and now we're back over to Creo Parametric. Here you can see our initial values. When we regenerate, we can see that the values have updated. A large hollow inner diameter means a thinner wall thickness, which means our part will be lighter due to lower power and speed requirements. That's all there is to it. Update PTC MathCAD, push to Creo Parametric, and regenerate. Our model always meets our requirements. If you are a designer or an engineer, you probably have a whole set of notebooks where you have captured information and calculations about the design problems you're working on. If you work with designers and engineers, you've probably seen them carrying their notebooks around. People have been using them literally for centuries, including the Wright brothers, Thomas Edison, Benjamin Franklin, and Leonardo da Vinci. Notebooks are great. You can take notes, 
draw pictures, and perform engineering calculations. You can then use the information that you have generated as part of the product development process. Let's think about what happens to these notebooks. What happened to your notebooks when you left your last company or team? Think about a coworker who left recently. What happened to their notes and notebooks? How do we capture those engineering calculations in our CAD models? When someone else needs to make a change later on, how can they access our engineering calculations months and years later? In my experience, once someone leaves an organization, their notebooks are pretty much lost. Our CAD models don't capture our calculations. They're disconnected from one another, and no one else has access to those calculations. Real-world physical engineering notebooks, spiral-bound paper, have disadvantages in this day and age. Another common engineering problem that product development teams face is managing their system of units. Back in 1999, NASA launched the Mars Climate Orbiter. After nine months of travel, it performed an orbital insertion maneuver by firing its thrusters. The vehicle ended up at a much lower altitude than planned. It either burned up in the atmosphere or skipped off the atmosphere into outer space. Why did this happen? One team software performed its impulse calculations in English units while everything else was done in metric units. This simple mistake slipped through multiple levels of checking. The net result was the loss of the vehicle at a cost of $327.6 million and thousands of hours of work. NASA is literally a group of rocket scientists and still they can make mistakes with units. Other problems that I have personally encountered over my engineering career include English units versus the metric system. I've worked on product teams where one group uses metrics and another uses imperial units. Similarly, the confusion between mass versus weight can also introduce error. When we generate mass properties in CAD, we're usually talking about mass. When we're measuring things with a scale in the real world, we could be talking about mass or weight, and weight is mass times the acceleration due to gravity. People often use the two terms interchangeably when they are indeed different. And if you really want to confuse things, take a look at cabling where you measure weight per unit length, not weight per unit volume, and you usually mean weight and not mass. Pounds. This can be really confusing. The English unit for mass is the pound, and the English unit for weight is the pound. You have to multiply by the acceleration due to gravity to convert mass to weight. Just a couple weeks ago, someone was asking me if they needed to multiply the mass in pounds by 32.2 or 386.4 to get the weight. But here's the thing, if something is one pound mass, its weight is one pound force because that's how pounds mass and pounds force are defined, which makes sense, but is totally screwy at the same time. Different teams in your organization often use different units. For example, when I was working on unmanned aerial vehicles, the design team worked in inches, the electrical hardware team worked in millimeters, and our mission teams worked in feet, miles, and kilometers. Bottom line, there are so many places where you can introduce confusion regarding units, and it really is easy to make a mistake. How can we avoid these problems of physical engineering notebooks and potential mix-ups of units? By using engineering calculation software like PTC MathCAD Prime, which has numerous benefits for product development. First, it uses real math notation. There's no special programming language to learn. That makes PTC MathCAD Prime easy to learn and easy to implement. It is math software that is designed for engineering calculations. You can use it for sizing, for example, the thickness of your parts and the diameters of your holes. You can perform design validation to calculate the margins of safety and factors of safety 
based on stresses, deflections, temperatures, and more. And you can optimize your part design to find the best possible solution over the design space. You can document your calculations, processes, and decisions with text and images. Since MathCAD worksheets are embedded in your CAD model, there's no additional file to manage. Wherever your CAD model goes, the MathCAD worksheet goes along with it. However, you can save and manage the worksheet as its own separate file if you wanted to, for example, for sharing with others who might not have Creo Parametric. And you can manage the separate worksheet in Windchill just like CAD models, drawings, documents, and any other electronic files. Personally, I find the embedded worksheet easier since there is no additional file to keep track of. Using MathCAD with Creo Parametric helps solve the ages old problem of units. Units are built into MathCAD. You can use whatever units you want when defining your engineering calculations. You have three default unit systems, United States Customary, SI, also known as the metric system, and centimeter gram second. If you try to perform math with incompatible quantities, like trying to add a length to a force to a time unit, MathCAD will highlight your error. If you work with different units for the same quantity, such as length, mass, force, or pressure, MathCAD understands them and will report the result in the worksheet's units. Also, MathCAD can simplify units. For example, when you are working on electrical problems, PTC MathCAD understands volts, amperes, and ohms. Creo Parametric also understands units. All models have a system of units assigned to them. There are seven different systems of units that come built into Creo Parametric, and you can define your own custom systems of units. User-created parameters can also have units. And by default, unit sensitivity is turned on, so Creo Parametric understands the worksheet's units even if they are different than the model's units. You can pass inputs from Creo Parametric to PTC MathCAD in whatever units you want, and PTC MathCAD will understand them. And Creo Parametric understands the units of the outputs from MathCAD's engineering calculations. Let's look at how we use engineering notebooks in Creo Parametric. You are going to embed the engineering notebook in the CAD model. The PTC MathCAD worksheet is contained within the CAD model it drives. The MathCAD icon in the upper right corner of the Creo Parametric graphics area provides quick access to your worksheet. The PTC MathCAD worksheet is always just a couple clicks away. Engineering notebooks make use of the powerful relations functionality that most Creo Parametric users are familiar with. The unit sensitive option means that Creo Parametric understands the values and units of the MathCAD outputs. Relations are used to send inputs from Creo Parametric to PTC MathCAD Prime. Then relations are used to drive model dimensions and parameters from the PTC MathCAD output variables. When you change the CAD model in a way that affects your PTC MathCAD worksheet, the notification center in Creo Parametric informs you when you need to recalculate. By using engineering notebooks, you will gain the following benefits. You're building your design intent into your models. Design intent is all about building additional intelligence and additional information into our models so that when we need to make changes, our models update in ways that we plan for and expect. We're capturing the history and decisions that go into our models. We're no longer losing critical information when someone leaves the organization or the physical notebooks get misplaced. We're making sure our models meet our requirements by building those requirements into the model. The CAD part or assembly contains the worksheets that drive it. We're controlling when we want our models 
to update with our engineering calculations. Our models update when we want them to. Engineering notebooks solve the problems faced by product development organizations. Now that we know more about connecting CAD to PTC MathCAD with engineering notebooks, let's take a look at how easy they are to implement. Now let's take a look at pushing a change from CAD. Our requirements have changed and we need to transmit more power and operate at a higher shaft speed. Let's update those inputs. Let's change our power from 250 horsepower to 350 horsepower. And let's change our shaft speed from 36 revolutions per second to 45 revolutions per second. Then we can regenerate. Here we have the warning in the notification center that our MathCAD is outdated. Our worksheet is just a couple clicks away, courtesy of the PTC MathCAD Prime icon in the graphics area. Once again, all we have to do is update, save and push, and regenerate. Let's go back to our input variables. We'll update. Here we have our higher speed of 45 revolutions per second and our higher power requirements of 350 horsepower. Now let's scroll down to the bottom. Here we see our new output diameter. We see that the shaft hollow inner diameter has decreased from 28.4 to 27.2. As the power increases, so does the torque. That increases the load in the gears and the bending moments. Our worksheet recalculated the diameter of the drive shaft based on the formula for the maximum stress on a hollow shaft. Let's push the results back to Creo Parametric. Now we'll go back to Creo Parametric. Let's regenerate. In a moment, we'll see the change to our values. And so now we have a thicker wall thickness. Our part is thicker to accommodate the new higher operating requirements. Update, save and push, and regenerate. By using engineering notebooks embedded in our CAD models, we've captured our design intent. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and I hope you feel empowered to start driving your CAD models with engineering notebooks. Feel free to reach out to me at dmartin at with your questions and comments. Thank you very much.